Internet censorship is a big problem. I want to share a simple tool you can use to help promote the freedom of information and protect the privacy of those living under oppressive governments. This tool was relied on heavily in the Arab Spring protests, and it was instrumental in getting the Snowden revelations out. It's needed now more than ever, and it's recently become easier than ever for you to help out. It's an onion. That'll make sense in a minute. In Ukraine, surveillance from the Russian government is ever-present, making it difficult and dangerous for Ukrainians to communicate. And in Russia, the government has entirely restricted access to major platforms and independent news. It's impossible for citizens to get anything but state-sponsored information through regular channels. Russians trying to organize or take part in anti-government protests, or even just expressing anti-war sentiment, can face years in jail based on their internet activity alone. So what can someone do in this situation, and what can you do to help? Well, the good news is, Ukraine is in decent shape so far in terms of having internet access at all. Most regions still have regular access. Elon Starlink has also provided satellite terminals, which immediately became the targets of signal jamming attacks, but may help to maintain connections to the outside world. Once online, one common answer to getting around censorship is to use a VPN, a virtual private network. But the Russian government has already banned more than a dozen providers across the country. It's easy enough to lock out a specific provider. And if one isn't banned, there's a decent chance it's cooperating with the state already, and therefore potentially worse than not using a VPN at all for Russians and Ukrainians. Enter Tor. Tor is many things, but it's mainly a special web browser built for anonymous internet access. Tor allows free and private access to information for people in countries where the internet is censored or surveilled. Yes, it can help users anywhere there's surveillance. Tor stands for the Onion Router. Here's how it works. Volunteers run thousands of relays and bridges across the world, and encrypted traffic gets routed through multiple layers of servers. Users can request a bridge into the Tor network, and each server only has enough information to know where to send the encrypted data next. Nobody can know the entire path taken or read the encrypted data along the way. Like an ogre, Tor uses these layers to make it harder to see the real end user. Also like a famous ogre, Tor got started in the early 2000s. And to keep ahead of censorship, it's been in a constant cat and mouse game ever since. As oppressive governments find new ways to block its usage, Tor has gotten increasingly sophisticated to evade detection. You can volunteer to run a bridge or even a relay on the network, if you're technically inclined and have a static IP. Now I'm not recommending that the average user do this necessarily. If you want to learn more, go here. But keep in mind that your IP might end up on an oppressive government's ban list. Speaking of which, didn't Russia block Tor already? Well, not exactly, but they did do two things to make it harder to use. First, they blocked the main domain of torproject.org, which is where most people would go to download Tor. But there are still other ways to get the browser. There's more info on those in the description. Since anyone can request a bridge, the Russian government has also been requesting bridges the way any other Tor user would, then blocking those IP addresses one by one countrywide. So part of the cat and mouse game is to have new bridges added all the time to stay ahead of sensors and always have reliable connections left for legitimate users. Tor's latest advancement is called Snowflake. It's a decentralized network of short-lived user IPs that sits in front of the regular Tor network. This makes it harder to find and block every possible path. Here's how it works. As a volunteer, all you have to do is install a browser plugin or open the Snowflake page in a new tab. That runs a bit of JavaScript code, which allows another user to funnel their web traffic through you anonymously. It uses WebRTC, the same protocol you'd use for a video call or streaming media. So you're not downloading any files, not exposing your own IP address across the whole network, and you don't have to worry about being held responsible for the contents or the destination of any traffic that runs through you. All of that is unknowable by design. I installed the Snowflake plugin myself last week. It helped eight people connect in my first 24 hours, and that number has been rising ever since. Now, I don't know whether these users might have been Ukrainian or Russian or somewhere else in the world, but the Tor project is able to report that we've seen a big increase in bridge users in both countries recently. Uh.
it's in my eye. Running Snowflake had no noticeable effect on my own internet speeds. I tried bandwidth monitoring, but the amount of traffic compared to my regular browsing was pretty much negligible. Could someone use your connection to stream large amounts of data through Snowflake? I reviewed the code itself and I saw that there was throttling built in, but I still wanted to double check. So I ran the Tor browser myself, connecting through Snowflake to see how much throughput I could get. And the answer is, not much. It's often close to dial-up speeds, and it seems like other parts of the Tor network already put a natural bottleneck on the upper limit. So you won't be helping anyone pirate movies through Snowflake. But when it's the only way to safely access the web, it's still a useful tool for those in need. If you do find your own connection is slowing down, you can always turn Snowflake off. And given the beauty of time zones, if you live in a country over here, you could leave your browser open overnight to help people in the countries over here during their daytime. So be a snowflake. Help others more safely access a free and open internet. It's as easy as sending thoughts and prayers, but it can actually have an immediate practical benefit for someone halfway across the world, improving both their safety and their ability to access information freely. You can also use Tor for ordinary browsing. The more members on the network, the stronger the overall network becomes. Please share this video, especially with friends in other countries. In times like these, tools like Tor can make a world of difference to those seeking out free information and battling oppressive governments. I ate a whole onion for this video. The least you could do is try out Snowflake. <laughs>